Can you master music using the same software that you use to mix it? Or do you need some specialized mastering grade software to really master the music appropriately? You're gonna have an answer by the end of this video. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about what you could be missing out on and what you certainly are not when it comes to having a dedicated digital audio workstation for mastering. What's going on everybody? It's Bobby Balo from Rayton Productions here. And this channel is dedicated to helping you make better sounding music without needing to buy expensive gear or unnecessary plugins. If you're new here, thank you so much for spending time with me today. Be sure to hit that subscribe button because I drop new videos every single week. It's gonna help you level up the quality of your music. And if you're looking for some inspiration for that song you're working on, or maybe some mastering grade plugins to use on your latest single, I have a special gift for you. In the description, you can download my guide. It contains my favorite free mixing and mastering plugins. These are plugins I use pretty much every single day when I mix and master music. I know they sound great, and I know you're gonna find these super valuable. Some of them sound even better than my paid plugins. So if that sounds interesting to you, go and check that out. Again, there's a link to that free download in the description. So I'm just gonna start off right away and just let you know that you do not need a specialized mastering program to master your own music. You don't need Steinberg Wave Lab. You don't need Isotope. You don't need Sequoia. You don't need any of that stuff. The only advantage to using mastering grade software is in the workflow. And to prove to you that you're gonna get a pretty similar quality, at least in terms of sample rate conversion, I'm gonna show you a bunch of plots on a website called Infinite Wave. I have a link to this website so you can check it out in the description. All right, here is Infinite Wave. Love this website. I'm so glad the creators made this because it's such an easy way to double check the quality of our software we're using. So all these plots are basically sine sweeps from 20 hertz, I'm guessing, all the way up to above 20,000 hertz. These plots are colored in a way so that the white line is basically zero dB or maybe slightly below that so it's not clipping. And then if you see black, that means it's, pretty much silence, right? It's minus 180 decibel noise floor. So it's so, so, so quiet. And this tells us how clean the conversion from 96 kilohertz to 44 kilohertz is with the different um, digital audio workstations that we have. So this first sine sweep is pretty much perfect. We only are seeing the the sign sweep itself. If we see anything else in these plots that tells us that it's adding those sounds to this audio signal, okay? And so we wanna minimize that if we're mastering. We really don't wanna add extra crap to our songs that doesn't need to be there. So this is from WaveLab Pro 10. This is one of the latest and greatest mastering software that's out there. And this is what the plot looks like, pretty much perfect. Um, let's take a look at what Ableton Live 10.1 looks like. It's almost identical, right? So the sample rate conversion from 96 to 44 on Ableton is pretty much the same as mastering grade WaveLab is. So let's check out some other ones. Let's look at Ableton Live. Let's look at the older version. Still really good. 9.1 is still good. 9.03 has some artifacts now. Now this is, this is called aliasing. This is anharmonic information. It makes music sound almost like uh, irritating or ringy, kind of. But if we look at the color of these lines, this is at 18,000 hertz, which most people can't hear. It's this like purple pink color, which is basically at minus 90 dB. And I would say in most recording studios, your noise floor is higher than that. So. That means that the aliasing noise that's there is going to be buried under just the, the random static or noise that occurs just from having equipment or microphones. So this is probably all inaudible. Um, let's look at some other software. So let's check out, uh, I use Cubase. So let's check out Cubase 10. Almost looks identical, right? It's almost no added aliasing. It's great. Um, Cubase 9.5, now we see some patterns everywhere, right? So this tells us that we're adding all these frequencies. But again, 
Look at the color, right? It's purple. That's at like minus 110 dB. So it, again, it's so quiet, you'd never be able to hear any of these artifacts. Let's check out FL Studio. Look at that. Pretty similar to the Mastering Grade Wave Lab. FL 10 is even better. What else do we have? Let's look at FL 11, 12. FL Studio 20 is really an improvement from the other versions. But again, this is all, you're not going to hear any of these differences because it's already so good. Let's look at Isotope. Looks great. Logic looks phenomenal. Pro Tools has some aliasing. Again, not going to hear it. What about Reaper? Looks really good. All versions of Reaper look really good. If you use Reason as a digital audio workstation, again, Reason looks really good. Studio One, let's check this out. It looks fantastic. Sonar also looks great. So you're not really gaining anything in terms of quality using a mastering DAW, but what about the workflow? Let's talk about what the other things you need to do when you master your music. So some of the features that the mastering software have that I really do think is somewhat beneficial but not necessary is the ability to quickly reference and level match music. So in Isotope, they have a dedicated referencing button you can push that allows you to flip between some songs that you know sound great and the song that you're trying to master. Steinberg Wave Lab also has something similar where it allows you to quickly reference music and gain match the volume so you're not being misled by something that's level matched incorrectly. But there are plenty of plugins that you can buy that does this exact same thing. One that I love to use all the time is called Metric AB. That plugin is incredible. It allows you to quickly check a bunch of different references, allows you to look at the frequency response and plot them against the songs you're working on. It's an incredibly powerful tool. Something that's mastering specific that Ozone has is the ability to preview the codex of the lossy converted files. What that means is you can just hear the sound quality if you were to export your song at, let's say, 128 kilobits per second MP3 or an AAC format for Apple or something like that. That way you don't have to render the song you're working on to hear what it sounds like when it's converted to these streamable formats. But again, we can also buy software that allows us to do exactly the same thing within our digital audio workstation. So one plugin I use is Sonic's Pro Codec. So that software will not only let you preview what the songs sound like in real time at those different quality settings, but Sonic's Pro Codec also lets you do is batch export MP3s from WAV files, and it has a feature to calculate what the true peak value is of the WAV files and then generate MP3s that are normalized to that true peak value so that there's no inner sample peaks in your MP3s. And that's a feature I haven't seen in any of the mastering software. Some of the mastering DAWs offer advanced dithering. That is pretty much not important at all. <laughs> The only time that becomes an issue is if you have music that is extremely dynamic. I'm talking greater than like 100 decibels of dynamic range. And it's very rare that modern music has anything beyond 20 decibels of dynamic range. So you're really not gaining a whole lot by using some really advanced noise shaped or patented dither algorithms. The ones that we have and use every day in our digital audio workstations are totally fine. And finally, the last major difference between a mastering grade DAW and just one that we use to mix and create music in is the ability to prepare what's called a disk description protocol or a DDP. What a DDP is, is basically just a virtual CD that contains all of the songs, the track timings, the spacing, everything that's needed to create a perfect copy of a CD is included in a DDP. And essentially the replication or duplication plant will take that information and then prepare physical copies of CDs for you using a DDP. And I know most mixing and music creation DAWs don't have that as a feature or an option to export DDPs, but it's really not that big of a deal because I'm finding that my clients that work with me are less and less asking for DDPs because very rarely are people making physical products anymore. And if you do need to make a DDP for yourself or for your clients, they also have good, cheap software that you can buy from a third party like Hoffa 
that will allow you to prepare DDPs in just as good of a quality as you would get from any mastering grade software. So Hoffa makes a DDP creator and CD burner software. It's like 40 bucks. I have a link to that in the description if you wanna check that out. But that'll do everything that these mastering grade DAWs can do. I've been personally mastering music professionally out of Cubase, which again is a mixing DAW. Again, it's not really marketed as a mastering program, but you can absolutely master professionally out of it. Please don't feel like you're missing out by not having the latest and greatest mastering grade software because it really doesn't matter. Now, if you are doing mastering professionally full time, every day, hundreds of songs a week, then it might make sense to gravitate towards a mastering DAW because again, there's some workflow enhancements there that's gonna help you stay really, really efficient. But for 99% of us, any DAW will be just fine. So let me know how you master your songs. Are you mastering them within the same session at your mixing or are you using a different software altogether to do the mastering? Is there anything that I left out that's extremely useful or beneficial in mastering grade software that isn't really in a standard DAW? Let me know in those comments. And if you're looking for a free mastering grade sample rate converter that you can use, I have one that's included in my favorite free mixing and mastering plugins guide that I talked about earlier. You can grab your free copy in the description. There is a link that'll take you right to that download. If you learned something from this video today, be sure to hit that thumbs up button because that tells YouTube this video is actually helpful and it's gonna show it to more people and help them. If you think others will benefit from this video or one of my other videos, be sure to share it with them. So with that, thank you so much for your time and attention. I hope you got a lot out of this video and I hope it inspired you to make music even if you don't have some mastering grade DAW. And with that, I hope to see you in another video.